Hello, today I'm going to show you how to paint a stone arch. I went closer and produced a sketch of the arch itself. I went there for the evening light and just pop in some highlights of the sky. Because the cliffs are a bit of a dirty white, you have to have some colours in there to give a little bit of contrast. When you are painting a um, sunset, it does change very, very quickly. So you need to decide on the action you're going to take and put it down quickly. Because when you look up again, it would have changed. I'm just going to use clear brush with just water on just to merge the two colours together. And I've got ultramarine just warmed up a little bit with viridian. And I don't mind that they run into each other because it's that sort of soft sky. Putting in odd areas. And then I'll go back between them with a slightly different colour. And then on the left there's hardly anything so I'll just use the water. And I'm just going to use a little bit of cobalt violet or any purple that you've got. And just drop that in between the grey marks that I've made, which warms the whole sky up a little. Whilst I'm waiting for it to dry, I can actually paint the beach. It's a pebbly beach, so I think the best way of tackling it is to use two or three different colours and just drop them in together. So. I'm going to use yellow ochre and some of the grey that I used for the sky but water it down a lot so it's less obvious and a little bit of pinky brown so I'm using zillion crimson and burnt sienna together not cleaning the brush between times I want them all to merge slightly but because the beach is warm, it will make the white cliffs stand out a little bit more. In the middle, it's slightly lighter because it's further away and it's got different light. Water the paint down a little. I've got some sea defences here and some little boats on the foreshore. And I'm not going to use the grey as much. I'm going to use the warmer colours. And it goes all the way round to then when there's just rocks on the beach and where it's tidal stones are dark because they're still wet so i'm just going to use a little bit of naples yellow in between the boats just to show the difference that it is much drier for the wet stones i've mixed a cool brown which is raw umber and then i've just added a little bit of French ultramarine and a zillion crimson just to give it a tone that's compatible with the colours I've already put down. Just going along roughly, just go round to indicate where everything is. And then a tiny bit more blue on top because it's slightly darker where it meets the next wave. So I'm just dropping some dark paint in and let it find its own way. I'm now going to put in the grass that's separated from all the sort of the, the rough gorse. I'll put that in and that help me get the colour balances. So it's very important to have the cliffs as the focal point and that seems to disappear to infinity at the top. So I'll start from the middle, work my way across and this area here looks more wild and then moving forward it's an area of the cliffs that's got greenery desperately clinging to it and that gets lighter towards the bottom so I'm going to go back with just the sap green keep the curl of the cliff it's concave by doing downward brush strokes slightly to the right and it goes further to the middle and there's a gully going down it looks like it's a just a, a incline with the coastal footpath but in here there's an area where the soils run off and stain the chalk. Go around the edge with yellow ochre, a little bit of water. This is all very delicate because the, the cliffs must be very
very pale so all you can do is paint in the negative and do dark things around them so the next thing i'm going to do is return to the beach and i've still got the beach colors out i'm going to put a few more just gently taking the brush for a walk change of color use some of the homemade gray quite weakly to drop in between them and i'll go over the whole beach like this just to give an indication of a rough surface it is slightly lighter in the middle just because it's not in shadow from anywhere the wall seems to start from the gully and it's slightly angled so i'll just fill the space first and then come back and put the angles in and it seems to stop just by the house on the hill and the way to make it look angled it's also got a shadow at the top so i'm going to use some stronger homemade gray number one brush again and drop it into the wet paint from the top and change the angle of the wall slightly and change it where it finishes with the boats here and i've got a little bit of venetian red which i'm going to put in where there's a shadow then i'm returning to burnt sienna And from the bottom, I'm just wiping it up. It doesn't matter if it skips on the tooth of the paper. And at the bottom, it's a little bit darker. So I'm just going to use the homemade grey again. Slip that in from the bottom. I put that in. I'm going to get a clean brush. And just move the paint down a little. Because it's always much sharper colour on the horizon. I'm leaving a gap for the footpath. So continuing along, not changing the colour at all, and it goes on to here and then it stops. So I'll just put a harsh line in there and then work back, get the brush again and move the paint. So that's giving the shape of the cliff and bringing the white chalk forward. I'm just working on the top hillside now and I've added a little bit of yellow ochre it's catching the light in a different direction and just pulling the paint down I'm still using a small brush because I don't want to just make it look one unit it is lots of changing shapes where the chalk's been eroded away slightly different paint keep stirring the paint up and I'm doing the paint most of the time in the direction of the concave slope now I'm going to add some brighter green and I'll just drop some dark green in mixed with the indigo and chrome yellow okay, and just drop it in from the top I'm making it weak because I want it to run it's coming down in the direction of the hillside dry brush just use a little bit of light lighter paint and just join it together again where i put the other colors underneath it will just give a slight change of tone now i can move back over to the next side a little bit more indigo because again this is catching the evening shadows but I needed to put the edge of the cliff on first it's always safer to do these things in two goes rather than and I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow ochre just into the wet paint just to give a few little highlights to show that it's not a lawn it's whatever's hanging onto the cliff so now I can move down that there's lots of grass growing wherever it can and I've got a nice sweep there down to the cave. No matter how quick a sketch is or how basic, very useful when you get home to sort things out. Also, if you stand up and take a snap, it's done in less than a second. Where if you're sitting there or standing there sketching, you've taken a bit more time. And I'm just mixing the two greens together now just to give a different tone as it goes in all different directions here it just goes down gently wipe the brush off and just soften the paint because these are areas that are merging i've cleaned some of the palette off but i've left areas that i 
need. I'm going to copy the water that I did here now and then leave everything else to later. So I'm going back to a number five brush. Obviously what I mix sitting on the beach isn't so easy to replicate at home but I think I've got three mixed up and I've mixed them up early because I want them to go in wet on wet. So I'm going up to the horizon very gently because it is a smooth sea on that occasion and it's quite dark on the horizon. So I'm just going to go back with a little bit of French ultramarine, a slightly stronger line of paint there. And through the arch. And then coming forward with the mix I made with the Davies Grey. A list of colours is in the description. Taking it down to a point. And then going back with green. So I'm going to use Viridian and Lemon Yellow and the French Ultramarine together. I'll just mix them in gently. Let the colours overlap a little just to give a good line. And then in the reflection of the arch, I'm just adding Naples Yellow just to lighten it slightly. Then coming back towards the beach, it's more shadow, so I'm going to add sap green and more French ultramarine and a little bit more Viridian to make a different green. I need it to be a bit more yellow, so I'm just going to add some chrome yellow and then drop that in against the beach and the cliff. And there's a shelf here where the water's much more shallow. So this actually only comes out so far. It's evening light. There's some dark shadows on the water, which will have to be put on when it's dry. They're almost navy blue waves rolling in. And I can put some in now because it's dried already and it's catching the tooth of the paper. I don't want such a harsh line. So I'll just gently move some of the paint. As long as you haven't got any water on your brush, you can move the paint around to give the suggestion of ripples if you've got a rough tooth. Picking up that it's not flat, there's something happening there. I can go back to the beach, which is a bluey green. So I'm just going to add some sap green to the French ultramarine. Dry the brush off completely from mixing it and just dab it in a little bit. And go around by the surf line just a little bit. I'm going to change to a number one brush, I think. Just go in more with the nooks and crannies. That where the white line is, the waves going back, it makes the sea behind it look a little bit darker just for a, a few inches. And again, feathering that out with a dry brush so it disappears. Whilst the sea and the beach pebbles were drying, I've just added a little bit more grass. And I'm now going to do the grass that's actually going down onto the front of the cliff. And then I can work out the gentle tones to stop the paper looking white. So I've got a very dark green and I'm going to start from here, which is a different coloured piece of rock mixed up a mid green i've added some chrome yellow to the indigo mix and i've got some french ultramarine on standby it's a question of less is more that there's grass growing down into the nooks and crannies which is dark because it's in a small space so there's a lot of shadow at this time of day and a few little tiny areas of rock that are quite jagged and then every now and again you get something that almost looks manicured lots of different tones and the coastal footpath seems to go along there and just work your way gently and go all the way up just follow it along trying to make it as random as possible and that's put more highlight on that area of rock the, all the grass seems to have given up at the front but there's some sheltered by this big piece of rock here. But the other thing that I've got to put on the beach is a virtually buried sea defence. 
which will be probably concrete but it looks quite brown in places it's probably just the growth on it and the beach is highlighted by the little dinghies that, and fishing boats that I'm going with this time a number five brush and I'm just going to use my sketch so I'm just going to start with the horizon just make that a tiny bit darker which will help the cliff look whiter just adding a mixture of French ultramarine and zillion crimson and a tiny bit of grey and that comes forward to the end of the arch there's obviously a tidal and current change there it warms up a little bit so I'll add a little bit more viridian I'm being guided by my sketch here drying the brush just feathering the paint out and then a little bit of French ultramarine to knock the warm paint back a little. Just put it on. Not covering everywhere, allowing the tooth of the paper and the previous layer to shine through. Going in very gently with sideways strokes. And this just gives the pattern of the water. And then coming forward, that pattern, it must be the wind whipping round the corner here, continues to the beach. Not adding any more water, just a little bit of paint on the brush as I go. You have to keep reloading the brush about every four strokes. So having got that far, I now need to go to the back with the green. So I'm going to use the green that I've used on the cliff top just to show it's in shadow then bring it forward with some lighter green just very gently it doesn't come out very far and then in the middle it's much lighter so I think I'm just going to use some of this very weak blue again but I'm going to dry the brush off having stirred it up let's put it in very gently it's almost not showing but it will harmonize it really it's shadow and wet rock so it needs to be quite dark but I don't want it to dominate the picture so now the arch following my sketch where she's got a very dark line here and then jagged lines on the edge so I'm doing sideways strokes Just where it's been eroded. It's quite dark at the bottom because of the time of day. I'll just drop some dark in. All darks will make the white rock elsewhere shine out a lot more. Then I'm going to go in with yellow ochre, the weakest imaginable mix. And just put in areas of yellow ochre and again on the next area just put that in the pillar behind the arch is brown at the bottom and then it's virtually clear at the top so just going to mix some darker cooler shadows because it's further away and then make up some homemade grey now this rock seems to have been formed in layers horizontal lines everywhere so I've now got the homemade grey quite a weak mixture and I'm just going to try and show with the number one brush the lines of the cliff And I'm going to get a flat brush just with plain water on a little bit dry and then just lose some of them so we've still got the suggestion but we haven't got every one give a broken effect and I'm just if I'm not if I've 
think I've taken too many off. I can just pop some back. The pillar. It's got, it's obviously got more of a pounding from the sea. It's got much bigger gaps. In some areas it's got nothing. And moving along, there's some dark lines which separate some areas. I'm not necessarily putting in every one. But I'm doing this with weak indigo. And there's a dark patch on the rock behind. So just to make a change, the indigo takes a change from it looking a bit brown. Just adds a focal point. What you're doing with watercolour is sometimes playing warm colours against cold colours. And where the arch changes contours in the fact that it's some of it's been knocked off the lines are at a different angle so you folded a piece of paper so i'm going to put some of the lines in in blue just to show that they're perhaps in shadow which is this is the indigo mix and then go back to the homemade gray which is warmer and add a few more just breaks up the cliff and I don't want them again to be dominant so I'm just going to use the dry clean brush and just touch them a little bit so that they're not complete I've now got just the indigo hardly anything on the, on the size one brush and I'm just finding areas that are showing slightly more like here there's a line all the way down just breaks it up a little and on the outside edge of the pillar now it's dry I can just put some more in just to make it look a bit more three-dimensional and then coming up to the top I've got almost a Looks like somebody's been chiselling at it here, all, all sorts of marks. So I'm just going to put some in, not every single one. But the indigo will sink back more, so it's a good starting point. You don't want every rock to look, or facet of the rock to look the same. It needs some variety. And again, a little bit more emphasis on this one here. As it's catching the evening light not not a straight line a wiggly line and then a little bit more under the arch just to show that the indigo just makes a, a firmer edge and there's broken lines around now i'll go back with a number three brush a little bit of yellow ochre and just go over some of the facets not necessarily all of them i'm going to add the homemade gray and copying the drawing i did on the spot there seems to be lots of patches So I can put the brown patches on. So I'll continue that all the way across, starting with the darkest paint and the smallest brush, and then working up to lighter paint and a bigger brush. The cave needs a few more nooks and crannies. So I'll put that in. And then there's cracks going all the way up. Just going very, very gently, just changing the colours slightly. I'm working my way back along the cliff face using a very dry brush with indigo on it just to create some of the shadows and nooks and crannies and then going back clean brush with yellow ochre have a gap 
then some homemade grey just to make things look different then a little bit of water and just lose them slightly so that they're not dominant and just finding any highlights there's a big area of rock here and it's quite light in one area and I'll just add some yellow there just to push the paint back and then the other side of it is very very dark so I've got some brown which I can put in down to the waterline and move it across sideways And that makes that one instantly stand out a little bit more and it has got some dark on it but not quite to the corner and the top again I can just add some yellow ochre and just merge it all in and it a more three-dimensional effect looking for all sorts of dark areas or nooks and crannies anything that I can find that's interesting just to highlight it and then go back with the indigo on the brush very very weak and then just put in some horizontal lines again for the way that the cliff face has been segmented but i don't want those i guess say to be dominant so i'm just losing them a little bit it doesn't matter if some of the area is still wet because it makes them softer and get the brush just dab them a little bit different techniques as i go along makes it look different and then coming further back, it's more in shadow. It's actually looking quite dark, so I'm just going to drop some stronger homemade grey in. And then go back with the indigo sideways again. Change it to yellow ochre. Just put a few lines in. The water to lose it a little bit and we've got boats on the beach which are mostly white with a dark line so again i use a dark color and i'll use the indigo this time because it'll show nicely against the sand just put in the tops of the boats and a shadow underneath and for the shadow underneath i will use Payne's gray so that it looks different And then just bleed it out slightly. I've added some fishermen's huts and boats on the foreshore. And I really hope you've enjoyed watching this demonstration. Then you'll go and find a seaside arch near you. I look forward to seeing you in a few days for my next video. Thank you for watching.